I'll never forget that Saturday morning as long as I live. I was almost 13 then. I woke up just as the sun was beginning its journey across the sky. I was much too excited to sleep. Grandfather was coming to take Martha, that's my younger sister and me, for a walk. I knew as I lie there listening to the muffled voices of my mother and father filtering in from the kitchen and savoring the smells of breakfast cooking that it was going to be a very special day. Although I didn't know it at the time, it was to be the day that Martha and I would find out that we had a very precious gift. I looked across the room and saw that Martha was still asleep in her bed. How could she sleep when I was so excited? So I jumped up, ran over, and pulled her covers off. Wake up, Martha, wake up. Grandpa's going to be here any minute. Philip, don't be so mean. I'll get up in a minute. As she pulled the blankets back over her, I ran to the window, just in time to see Grandpa coming up the walk. Hurry up, Martha, he's here. Dad and Grandpa were drinking coffee, and Mom had just put the food on the table when we came into the kitchen. We all sat down to eat breakfast together. Where are you taking the children this morning? I thought we might walk over to Joshua Lodog's place. He always looks forward to company, and he knows a lot of stories. We were so excited we could hardly eat. Just as we were finishing our last bites, Grandpa smiled. Are you both ready to go? The day waits for no one. Nodding goodbye, he headed for the door. We jumped up quickly from the table, said goodbye to Mom and Dad, and followed after Grandpa. The morning sunshine gently warmed us as we walked along. We were eager to hear the old stories. Joshua Lodog knew so many of them, he practically never told the same one twice. Grandpa seldom told stories like the kind Joshua Lodog told. He had his own gift. Grandpa, will you tell us some stories on the way? What are you learning in school? Same old stuff. Yeah, we're learning about ecology. Ecology? Philip, you know I never went to school. Would you please explain ecology to me? We had just come to the edge of the little stream. And as we sat down by the running water, I began trying to explain ecology to my grandfather. It's supposed to be like how everything works. You know, if you pollute the water, you pollute everything that's drinking it. And if you pollute the air, you pollute everything that breathes. They say everything's interrelated. I was wondering when they were going to get around to that. I don't get it. Me either. Come on, let's walk beside the little stream as we talk. The Great Spirit has given all people knowledge and wisdom, each in their own way, and has forgotten no one. To our Indian peoples and all others who live close to our Mother Earth, he gives knowledge and wisdom through dreams, visions, fasting, and prayer. And he has blessed us with the gift of seeing the many lessons he has put in nature and in the world around us. He has also given us knowledge and wisdom in books and writing. It's important that we learn in this way too. As long as we remember to take from the books only those things that bring goodness and understanding and help us to serve one another in better ways. Just then, Martha spotted a beautiful eagle flying overhead. Look, Grandpa, an eagle. What did it say to you? It said, don't kill me, I'm an endangered species. It did not. It didn't say anything. What did it say to you? He looked right at me as he repeated the question, and I didn't have a clue. But since he always said things were sacred... It said it was sacred. But what did it say to you, Grandpa? Enough to fill many books. It did? How? The same way it told you that it was sacred. It said, look at me fly. See how powerful I am. How high I can soar. My wings are perfectly balanced. I am like the peoples of the earth. One wing is for man, 
and the other is woman. When both women and men have equal power and respect and they are balanced, then the people of the earth will soar to their highest. The next time you see an eagle, he will tell you even more. At the time, I couldn't see how, but I knew he would. Grandpa had said so. We all walked beside the little stream for quite a ways without saying much. Just before we got to Joshua Lodog's place, Grandpa stopped and pointed to the little stream. Look at the wisdom that the Great Spirit has put into this little stream. Martha and I looked at the little stream. Now I had looked at that little stream a hundred times before, even swam in it. And looking at it again didn't help me to see any wisdom. I could tell that Martha was probably thinking the same thing. Feel the water. See how gently and lovingly it touches your hand. And if it gets fluid, we get fluid. Grandfather didn't miss a beat. Water gives life to all living things, and yet always seeks the lowest spot to show how humble she is. And no matter what we do to her, she always remains herself and never turns her back on anyone. Although she is humble, she has great strength patience and faith. For even if a mountain were to stand in her way, she would keep moving until finally the mountain would be washed to the sea. She would never give up. Now look at those trees. What do they say to you? Martha and I looked at the stand of trees just beyond the little stream, and we'd never heard them talk. But now we anticipated hearing them speak through Grandfather's words. Tell us, Grandpa. If we are to have peace in the world, we must learn to be like the trees. The alder doesn't tell the oak tree to move over. The oak doesn't tell the maple to move over. All of the different trees stand together with their roots deep into the same Mother Earth, refreshed by the same breeze warmed by the same sun. They stand together with their arms upraised in prayer and thanksgiving, supporting and protecting one another. Then Grandpa just looked at us, smiled, and started off towards Joshua Lodogs. We followed in silence. Just as we got to Joshua Lodogs, I remember thinking how wonderful it was that we are who we are that the Creator had blessed us with the gift of seeing how we should be and forgiving us our grandfather. The eagle, the little stream, and the trees would never be silent again. Joshua Lodog was very happy to see us and waved. Martha ran on ahead. Grandpa Lodog! Grandpa Lodog! We saw an eagle and it talked to us. That's very, very good. Did it tell you about the great wolf and the little mouse, sister? No. Did you tell us about people? Good. Because that's one of my best stories, and I want to tell it to you. Joshua Lodog did tell us about the great wolf and little mouse, sister. And he told us a lot of other stories that day, too. And as the days go by, I'll tell them all to you. For you also share the precious gift. Come, let's honor the elders, men and women who have made it through the night, through the darkness that came upon this land, with the winds of change, with the winds of change.
once upon a time, a long time ago, the great wolf stood alone in a meadow. He was crying. A short distance away, little mouse sister poked her head up out of the ground to see who was making all the noise. She looked around and saw that it was the great wolf. It made her sad to see the great wolf so unhappy. Small and insignificant as she was, she wanted to help. She had been brought up that way. So she walked up to him and spoke. Great wolf brother, why are you crying? <laughs> because I lost my eyes and I can't see. So who are you? I'm your little mouse sister. Why did you lose your eyes? Because I was very foolish and very selfish. My eyes fell out and got lost. If only I could see. I'd never be selfish again. Please don't be sad. I will help you. When the great wolf heard this, he began to laugh. <laughs> you, a little mouse, help the great wolf? Yes, I will give you my eyes. Then the little mouse reached in and took out her own eyes and put them where the wolf's eyes had been. This surprised him so much that he jerked back his head and caused the little mouse to fall off into the grass. Now that he could see again, the great wolf forgot his little sister and began running and dancing and leaping into the air. He was very happy. Then he remembered the little mouse who had given him her eyes and he went back looking for her. He found her in the same spot where she had landed and as he saw her sitting there, so kind, and so humble, so unafraid, tears began to flow from his new eyes, washing away the hardness he had long felt in his heart. My little sister, why did you give me your eyes? Because I've always been taught to give my very best for my brothers and sisters, that they may live well and be happy. My eyes were my very best. But now you can't see. That's true. But I'm only a little mouse. And you are the great wolf. The great wolf then sat down by his little mouse sister. Her words brought back memories that he had almost forgotten. Do you remember hearing about that time when we were all gathered beneath the sacred tree of life? That sacred tree of hope with its everlasting branches spreading across and sheltering all of the people? Yes, I remember. That was when we learned that we must love the creator of all things and that we were to show that love by loving one another. I had forgotten. Little sister, do you remember the promise of the sacred lake? Yes, but I could never find it now. Not alone, perhaps, but together we could find it. The great wolf then swooped up his little mouse sister and placed her safely on his back. No matter how long this journey takes or how difficult it may be, we will find the sacred lake and ask our good creator, the Great Spirit, to help you. They decided to travel north toward the snow-capped mountains because Wolf had remembered hearing that the Good Red Road ran north and south. So, he figured, if the Good Rad Road came from the north, and if they went that way, they would surely find the sacred lake. On the third day of their journey, as they were resting by a clear stream, they were awakened by three noisy otters sliding down the bank into the water. When the otters saw that they were awake, they came to visit. Who are you? Where are you going? What are you doing here? You want to play with us? I'm the great wolf, and this is my little mouse sister. And we're on a journey to find the sacred lake. 